This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, live from the Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And as usually, we talk a lot about Pittsburgh pro wrestling, indie pro wrestling, and everything. Uh, people in and around uh, independent professional wrestling. You can check out this show and so many more over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Sister Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook page for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And, of course, please also check out IndieWrestling.us, where a lot of times we're live streaming these and posting these as well on the Facebook feed. And look for the events to find out when you want to uh, you know, when you want to tune in or when we have to reschedule things a lot of times because of the damn weather, as is the case here. But finally, we tracked them down. We have our guest, and we have in studio right now, he is Edric Everhart. Uh, of the uh, uh, of the system elite, I've been mistakenly saying system shock lately. Thank you, system NXT. Shock. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of the system elite, the flannel extraordinaires and professional wrestling. I'm Thank even, you. I'm not even wearing flannel. I'm like a like a poser or something. Would you, well, I feel like you pan, you maybe you flannel OD'd after the show the other night. Oh, yeah, I wore a, I wore about nine flannels. I think it's what was, <laughs> five, five or six flannels. I was counting. Time. I was just like, oh, he's wearing like three flannels. <laughs> Wait, there's another flannel there. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that for a minute. That was a fun thing. So you're, you, you, there was a, a golden chic fashion show at Rise this past weekend yeah. as of this recording. Um, and I know when that graphic popped up and I was like, I was like, I was like canceling my plans going to be there. Cause they, those guys are great. That's a lot of people said, a lot of people said they looked forward to that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. I, they didn't know I, we were going to be in it technically, but no, I think everybody no, had like, no. a, and I felt sad. I was actually out yeah. talking with some people in the, uh, at intermission and didn't make it back to my seat and they were already coming out. I missed half of it. Yeah. Uh, but you guys interrupted and you guys for, for your tactic, you're very flannel. <laughs> yeah like i i don't i i just interpreted you know the few times that i've watched you guys so far i was like oh yeah it's the hipster tag team you know <laughs> yeah that's yeah i mean that's like kind of what we're going for uh like we um we really like the show uh regular show mm-hmm. and so we just adopted uh like those characters in a sense so that's kind of what it's I'm, based and on. And I'm not familiar with a uh, regular show, actually. Uh, I don't know. It was on Cartoon Network. It just went off the air. I, I'm in, I'm in, it's a Adult Swim show or something. Right? Uh, no, it was actually on regular. It was on. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, it was a regular cartoon, but uh, and then it went to Adult Swim at like one point, but um, it's just very based on like the millennial slash hipster attitude. That's mm-hmm. what it's. You know, it's. I think it's drawn and written by like a millennial hipster so it's like you know we'll talk a little bit more about the tag team here in a little bit but first we like to start the show as you know uh with a little bit of of uh all the hashtags in the chat room are amazing right now <laughs> um of course uh, you know as as with this crew we get we got a lot of the crew and former and future uh um, um uh guests on the indie mayhem show it seems uh but anyways uh so we like to get, do a little break of the ice or uh, people get to know you that maybe aren't following you here in uh, uh pittsburgh and, and 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 you know the wrestling that you know the promotions that you are involved in um what is your first memory of pro wrestling uh first memory is probably like hulk hogan but like hulk hogan in the sense of like hulk hogan in suburban commando and mr <laughs> nanny <laughs> So like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So, so that was your door in was Suburban yeah. Commando. Cause no, uh, none of my family were really fans of wrestling. So like I discovered it through like randomly renting movies and like, you know, my family, like my parents knew who Hulk Hogan was cause it's Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. So like they would rent me like, you know, Hulk Hogan kids movies, which was like Suburban Commando and like stuff like that. And I go, who is this? And then like, I would catch like superstars when it was on like, when it was on Fox and on Saturdays in the morning, I think that's what it was. And then that's when I discovered like Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart and stuff like that. But so it was just like you feel it, it's kind of like today, you know, we, we talk about how Total Divas is like bringing women into yeah. wrestling and they're like, oh, there's this. And it was like, maybe I'll that's watch why the like, when people put stuff like that down. That's like 
that's how new people watch rat like get into wrestling you know what mm. i mean or like if you're flipping through the channels i know uh mark man always says this marcus he he was flipping through the channels and he saw the undertaker and i was like and that was it and i was like that's yeah that's how you get into wrestling mm-hmm. like, i remember like real vivid like memories like i remember the hulk hogan stuff and then i fell out of it and then uh i randomly remember like one saturday night um my dad was just fell asleep watching tv and he uh i walk into the room and he's watching ecw and like he was he was fell asleep and it just came on and i saw like new jack like jumping off of like the the thing through the table like what the hell is that and then i realized that was wrestling and then and then just snowballed from there and i was like well i'm i'm done like like (laughs) (laughs) like anything i want to talk to like if i want to talk to other people about stuff i was like i know a lot about wrestling Mm -hmm. you want to talk about that was it the new jacks and the Shawn michaels that you really gravitated to at this point uh like it was just uh i think it was just eye candy like mm-hmm. so like what you know what i mean what is that like Shawn michaels is you know flamboyant and everywhere and like bret hart wore the pink and like you know it's just the pink the jackets you know hulk hogan is you know looking around like a like a mad man like a mad old man you know what i mean like it, uh and like that's what drew me to it mm-hmm. you know it kind it kind of sticks out in in Sunday morning television or wherever you find yeah. it, right? So especially if you're watching like cartoons, like your atypical cartoons, and then wrestling comes on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the real life. So it's cartoon. a real life cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the chat room saying uh, uh, it was actually Bam Bam Bigelow and LT that got you into it. <laughs> it's about the right era, right? Oh, it was a Mark Man saying it was actually Bam Bam Bigelow. Whatever, dude. I don't get out of here. Hey, Bam Bam was awesome. Bam Bam was awesome. Maybe, uh, I remember the cartwheel because he had the video game and he's yeah. the one that did the cartwheel. He also fl- did backflips. Mm-hmm. Like, and that was, and he's huge. So mm-hmm. it was like insane. So, so, you know, you're growing up watching this stuff. You're, you go, you're seeing ECW, WWE, or F at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the point where you were like, Hey, I think I can get in there and do this. Was it kind of in the back of your head uh, or? Yeah. Like, I mean, I always wanted it. Like at one point I really wanted it and then I fell out of it. Like, I think everybody, so, a lot of people have that. Like I've talked mm-hmm. to a lot of people where they just fall out of watching wrestling for a little bit. And like some people don't go back to it and some people do go back to it. And I fell out and then I f- came back in when like the invasion happened, which to everybody else was like awful. And looking back on it, it was kind of like crappy because you didn't get like who you wanted. But like coming back into it, like during the invasion, I was like, wow, this is, this is insane. This is WCW and WWE, you know what I mean? Going at it. Uh, and then like time passed and I just watched it and watched it and watched it. And then, uh, in college I was like, I, I, I could do this. I, I really think I could do this. And, um, that, and then that's a, that's a weird story. Like how I got, actually got into it. And how, how did you get into it then? From there? Uh, so, uh, me and like a bunch of people had like a wrestling club and like we would watch wrestling and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, a little yarding here and there, you know, mm-hmm. I think everybody... as, as you do when yeah. you're in that era, exactly. I, mean, I wouldn't even call it yarding. It's more like, you know, fucking, you know, play wrestling or something like that. It's not like anything insane. Um, but, uh, uh, a, a wrestler by the name of, uh, Vinnie Stone, uh, saw that we were like messing around he was like ah you guys probably shouldn't you know be doing this because you're not trained or anything like that and uh he got uh permission to train us from jake garrett and uh so jake garrett helped with the training and uh Benny stone helped you know get me started i guess so I trained. So this wasn't like through a school. Like you just kind nah, of. This like, is like, yeah. Like outside a curricular kind of. Kind yeah, of which thing. is we- it's a weird. It's a weird thing to say. Like back in the day, I would like shy away from saying it because I mean, I'm still probably going to get shit on for saying that. You know what I mean? But like. Uh, but um, a lot of people like anymore, like trained by the, I guess trained by the business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like Sami Zayn and like a lot of those people. I'm not Sami Zayn, Jesus Christ, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh 
yeah and it just kind of happened and um and then like i i mean i furthered training like you know, chris i i say chris larusso helped me a lot mm-hmm. you know what i mean and, you know jake garrett's pretty legit in this area everybody knows who jake garrett is and um yeah and then that's how it just kind of it's kind of happened and just started wrestling and then I got better with more matches I had, I guess. And, and that's not unusual. So, so, I mean, you know, we, we talk with a lot of people that they'll be training for like no, six I mean, every, months, a year. Yeah, everybody trains like, but until you actually have like a match, mm-hmm. you're like, that's nothing. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, anybody can, I feel like anybody can go in and take a bump. It's like, it's using those bumps for, you know, emotionally, like making somebody emotionally invest in you about taking a bump. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Not like a useless bump, you know. So let's talk about that going in. Like, was there, um, you know, w- you know, obviously we, we talked a little bit about what you guys are doing. Le- and I think you're kind of the same kind of uh, character across uh, the different promotions I've seen you in as well. Yeah. So what was, I've seen some pictures. I was trying to pull them up here. <laughs> but uh, there was a picture that pulled up about something. I think the comment was the original Team Canada yeah. or something. Talk a little bit original about. Original Team Storm. Original Team say. Storm, yeah. right. Uh, how, uh, t- tell me about like kind of what, what was your wrestling persona kind of starting out? Uh, starting out, I was, uh, I debuted uh, at KSWA as uh, JP Goulet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, Wait, were you rocking the accent and everything? Along no, with no, no. I was, I guess I should have, probably should have been. That would have been a better character, but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh JP Goulet and uh Ty was Drew Blanger and we were Canadian Canadian perfection. Yeah. Canadian we did the perfection. same exact thing. We came out with like the beginning of like the beginning of the Canadian anthem mm-hmm. and into like some you know sick rock song. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're saying maybe you laid the template out for Team Storm's recent success. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, you know it. Someday, uh, somewhere, somewhere, Jack Pollock saw that, and when they were bringing yeah. it together, right? You know, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, so where did you? How how, how long did that last? And and uh, what were you kind of discovering as you kind of developed as you know? How did you just say, "Hey, we'll be Canadian"? For it was thing? it was given to us. Yeah, Do you know okay. what I mean? Like okay. they gave us a flag, and they gave we actually gave them Team Storm our original Canadian Perfection flag. No way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. I guess you're welcome. I mean, you have to deal with fucking Argos now, but whatever. Yeah, you know, uh, two <laughs> two time rookie of the year, by the way. So there you go. Um, so so, how long did this Canada thing last? <laughs> uh, I don't even remember. A couple, maybe maybe a year, maybe mm-hmm. maybe less than that. That was the uh, KSW was the only place we were doing it because we like other places like we had an idea of what our name was and everything, and that every you know, everywhere else I went by you know, Edric everywhere else and stuff like that. Um, but we still ran, like we still did the Canadian thing for a little bit, even though I ran, like I had my actual like Edric name, but um, yeah, a little for a little bit. And then like we left there and came back as like our, our like indie names, you know, mm-hmm. the names that people like we got over like other places and stuff. So you guys, so you actually had like this, you know, you had this thing kind of set up for you and you kind of grew outside of it. It's kind of like what we see with that WWE effect where people go make their name somewhere else and then come back. Yeah. Right. With that name. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I like it because like, um, I don't know, like I wasn't that good starting out. So mm-hmm. like if I'm, if I'm under a different name, then I can, you know, that's why like, I know a lot of people start out like under Matt, under hoods. And stuff like that, and then they take them off and do something else. And I guess no, you just you just hit under a Canadian flag. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I hit under a nation. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It just guarantees they won't remember you later, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so talk a little bit. So you, you you know you went off. You did like kind of character under your on your na- names you're using now and everything. How did the tag team kind of start forming? Uh, we trained together, Ty and I, and uh, and. We just we kind of look alike in a sense, like mm-hmm. two beard guys, two beard guys, yeah. Uh, and it just blossomed from there. And like I think in the training, like in our like the people that trained with us, him and I were the ones like were two of the people that like got along, and like we would hang out outside of like training and wrestling and stuff like that. So you know we just became buddies. So like 
Go, what's better than tag team wrestling with your buddy? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Tagging with your buddy. So that's how it happened. And then like we went through a bunch of stages of like what we were, you know, we were the cocky tag team at one point. We were, you know, Canadian at one point. And then we like, we did one time did stuff with like suits at one point And like, I don't know. We but did, all under the system elite name. Yeah. We've, we've gone through so many different like, like, things of system because that's been that, that was one I mean, you know one question i had when i like saw you on a poster or something for one of these shows probably probably stomp out cancer is probably when yeah. i first started getting to know uh seeing you guys work i was like what is actually didn't you do an iwc show at one point yeah okay that's where i first saw you and yeah. i'm just like i saw the name on the on the on the, on the run sheet and i was like i wonder who these system elite guys and then here comes out flannel guys <laughs> yeah. and i was just like i i, I think i asked a question on the headset of what is so elite about these guys? <laughs> it was just like just we just had the name and like we got it, we got the name from like a song that we were using like a theme, mm-hmm. and and then we just like we just kept the name and then people kind of know us from being system elite. So right, like, right. it's like well we can't really do anything about it. Like we're, so the gimp- like like well, I mean if we change our name I don't know we'll, we'll change it to like you know d- a couple dudes that were like like I don't know what to change the name to. The name would either change from you know system elite to. And then there's, like, ah, there's a so, bunch of rebranding. And, oh, God. It's just... <laughs> you got to get a new Twitter handle. <laughs> God, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So so really, like, the characters kind of developed outside of that you yeah. know, kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like, well, you know, why is he still Undertaker when he's a biker? Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's bad. I guess. It, yeah. That's exactly what it's like. And, like, and then the, the hipster thing kind of came about. Like, well, yeah. Well, we, we should just be ourselves like how everybody sells it like says it be ourselves ourselves times like 10 you know what mm-hmm. i mean that's kind of what we what we went for i saying it's too far gone now <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go uh and by the way you know again picturing this you know and, and you'll you'll see the image on the uh, on the post of what these guys look like when they come out and, yeah, and also was... just imagine this package and then coming out to the right stuff with new kids on the block hanging tough hanging tough i'm sorry yeah. I'm sorry. I, oh, you're good. You're fine. It's been a while. I'm, I'm rusty <laughs> on my new kids. I'm sorry. I used to re- I used to watch the new kids cartoon. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> That's my era. Uh, but uh, but so it's kind of an interesting package coming. Yeah, out that gets people into it. Yeah, it's just everything. Uh, like uh, it all it all happens. Anything that like we do comes like is us sitting there and going. We should come out in flannels, and we laugh mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, come out in flannels." You know, we we should just come out in flannels. Why not? And then well, we got to take them off, right? Nah, it, it's just wear them. Like, oh, who cares? Like, it <laughs> gives us something different. Um, it's the same with new kids. Like, it's on that. It's in the show, regular show. Mm-hmm. They there's a montage to Hanging Tough, and we were just like, "Well, what if we came out to that?" All right. Okay, let's do it. And then we just went with that. And I think it sets us apart. You know what I mean? What is the secret of keeping the flannel on tied around your waist the entire match? It just happens. It just happens. Yeah, no, everybody asks us that. And it's just, it just happens. I don't know if I just, I'm just really shitty at tying mine, but whenever I have a jacket around my waist, I just, just double knot. Just, just the get knot. that double knot, right? Just that double yeah. knot, yeah. And it, it, it stays, which is insane. Like, <laughs> everybody asks us, and I go, I, I tie it. And it works. So, yeah. There you go. Um, I, so you, you're doing System Elite, and I know you're doing. Uh, I've seen in singles action, of course, mm-hmm. in uh, Black Diamond, and, and I know you know you guys are around a few different places. Um, tell me a little bit about you know kind of working the tag teams versus the singles, because you're you're kind of you know here and there. Yeah. Between that, um, you know, what was the preference, and and you know, do you do you have a preference of the two? Uh, no, not really, because like it gives me two different like two different gimmicks to to work like the gimmick you know the gimmick of the tag match is the tags you Mm -hmm. know what i mean the tag wrestling so like and oh man you could i I mean i guess i would prefer tag wrestling because you could do so much more with Mm -hmm. the tag team and a tag wrestling and it's um compared to singles and like uh but yeah like i would prefer tag wrestling over singles but i like i mean i like doing singles like I like being a heel doing singles, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like the f- I like being a good guy to doing singles. I'm getting more used to it now than I used to be because I I mean I had like a big run in Black Diamond as a heel, and uh, with Connor and 
him and I did some really cool stuff like with that. And that was when I was like starting to really come into my own as a heel. So heel wise, I would go singles, but tag, I like being the face tag team. I like, you know, Mm -hmm. and for those that maybe haven't listened to all the episodes, Matt Connor, uh, the Reaper who we, we talked to uh, uh, a couple months ago and is in the chat room, by the way. Um, yeah, he's, he, he's 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 around <laughs> a pretty good regular right now. So awesome. Uh, so uh, I said you're about six years into your career, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me a little. Oh, um, six ish. Somebody told me six earlier today. How long is it? Is it eight? Eight or nine? Eight or nine? Wow, I got some maybe bad information. Seven. Maybe seven. Need to update your Wikipedia. Page maybe it'll be apparently. eight soon. I don't know. There, there's, I don't, there's no way I have a Wikipedia. There's no way I have a Wikipedia. <laughs> I would have to make it if I had a Wikipedia. Somebody's going to have to start his Wikipedia now. Um, but uh, uh, tell me a little bit, like, what are kind of, kind of the highlights there? Because, again, I'm only really kind of knowing your most recent history here in the yeah. area. Um, uh, we did KSWA for a while. Mm-hmm. That was the tag yeah, Some people are talking about it in the chat room, actually. So Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you were apparently part of the VIPs over yeah, there. Yeah, that was a that was a big that was a thing for a while. And then um we did a place out in Youngstown called mm. HBW. And uh we made we we got that like legit like almost there. And then they, they shut down, so that's pretty sick. I was about to win. I think I was about to win like the title at one point and they shut down. I was like, oh cool. Sick. Uh, you, and then you, you, you <laughs> shut down a promotion. You were you you ran them out of the town. Yeah. I was too bad. I was too badass. Uh and Black Diamond, um Jake Jake's saying to talk about the beginning of Black Diamond, actually. Uh oh yeah, we were the um uh we came in as the insurgents. Uh and it was we came in as the insurgents, and it was the night before uh um the nexus debuted on raw so i think jake told you this right yeah 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 about how you guys had pretty much that night when they tore up the ring you guys did it the yeah. night before yeah on sunday on yeah, a sunday show insane um <laughs> what we, we we've heard jake's uh, uh i i think we talked about him on the show um uh, about that happening what were your thoughts when you're like i did this on the show in west virginia and you're turning into Monday Night Raw. You just have and to. Like, you just you just laugh because it's ridiculous. You're like, what the hell is going on? Mm-hmm. Like you almost like. It's just like, like you you're you're like that can't be coincidence. And, and Black Diamond, but like it, I, it has to be. It has to be coincidence. Right. There's no, there's no way. This, this isn't. One. This isn't one of those things. Like Black Diamond, I doesn't even that long ago doesn't have a giant internet presence yeah right like yeah. there's not videos on on smart mark or anything like that that people are going to be seeing this stuff so it's like how even then it was like next to nothing yeah 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 like a lot of promotions weren't right um so you know that it's kind of a, a crazy thing yeah so uh black diamond and then we run the tag gimmick there mm-hmm. we break off do all that we done the tag gimmick and then we started the black hand society in black diamond mm-hmm. and uh that was fun because it was just you know all of, like all my friends and that was, that was a faction with who? Uh, it was Peyton Graham, uh, Ty, Jack Pollock, uh, Marcus, mm-hmm. and yeah, we were the Black Hand Society, and uh, that's when I went on. I won the heavyweight title as the group. We all won the like all the ti- We all run. We won all the singles titles, and uh, I had some really good matches with Tony Johnson, who's. Mm vastly underrated god vastly under you should have him there's there's someone you should have on the show because he's very good uh and connor those are two probably two of my biggest like rivals there connor and i passed the title back and forth Mm -hmm. so yeah awesome um so on that note so what what are you kind of keeping an eye out these days is there anything that you're watching maybe online on tv uh, any wrestlers out there that, that are kind of inspiring you at this point um I like, uh, I, I mean, I kind of watch the the current WWE product. Mm-hmm. I, I like catch like the YouTube stuff, and like I'll watch, you know, I'll watch like Raw twenty five coming up because that's that's gonna be awesome because like it's all like the people that I grew up watching going back to the Manhattan set. Yeah. Uh, and I'll watch New Japan. I watch I watch anything anybody like says I should watch. Um, like 
I'm trying to think if there's anybody who really inspires me, like wrestling wise. Um, see, I don't really know. Like, uh, there's he's no, past like, inspiration, folks. Yeah, I'm past it. I'm completely. <laughs> I mean, there'll be there'll be matches that I'll watch and I'll be like, wow, that's awesome. I like wrestling. I like you know. I watched the Jericho Omega match and I was like, oh, wrestling's cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like other like, there's nobody really that's inspired me, which I guess is a good thing because I'm not just stealing shit from people. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, 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 there was a tweet that went out and says, "Well, if you miss Wrestle Kingdom, don't worry, you'll see all the good moves at the in, your indie show, local indie show yeah, this weekend." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, what is the best and the worst thing about uh, indie wrestling for you so far? Uh, we'll start with the worst. I would say the worst. I mean, besides you know the politics, but like. I would say the worst is probably um, uh, unhealthy jealousy. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, there's healthy jealousy. Somebody like does something that you want to do, and you go, oh, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that." Mm-hmm. But there's unhealthy jealousy where people will, you know, just bash you and not even, like, not even really like do anything about it. You know what I mean? They just, they just stays in them and just. Turns them to the dark side. I guess you, you use a Jedi analogy for it. You know what I mean? Um, the best thing uh, is just playing with people's emotions. Like, no doubt. Like, the, that heel thing again, right? The, the, that and just like uh, like when you and like so, you're in there with somebody and you do something and you take the big bump and you just hear the crowd react to it and you go, oh, man, they're right there. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you just and when you're building, you're in a match and you're building to, it and you hear them get a little louder, get a little louder, get a little louder, and then you hit the big thing mm-hmm. and they just explode. Um, I'm like, God, we got them. Uh, like Connor and I had a had a match like that once, and the match was okay. I mean, it was all right. It wasn't like the best match ever, but um, uh, we did some stuff, and when the three count happened, they exploded. And I was like, that was that was a, that was magic. Mm-hmm. Like I've never experienced something like that. And like, hopefully, I experience it a ton more times. But that like that moment is what is the best thing about wrestling. That's the thing you chase. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the drug. That's the that's the wrestling drug. That's the reason we all do this for no money. You know what I mean? Like we mm-hmm. don't do this for money, of course. But that's that like that that drug. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So uh, we talked about a couple of them. So generally, if anybody catches this later after this recording, uh, what promotions are you popping up in in, in the next few months? Uh, we'll uh, we'll be at Rise, of mm-hmm. course. That's like our main our main place right now. Uh, Ty and I have uh, PCW. That's uh, coming pr- up. Premier Championship Wrestling. Yep. I understand that might be a second PCW out there. So oh yeah, so. PCW <laughs> Cleveland. PCW Cleveland. PCW Cleveland. <clears throat> uh, and um yeah we'll be there i think two shows in february so we'll be there for both of those mm-hmm. um black diamond i don't think i'm i'll probably might be around in february i think there's that that's the hoss that's the hoss tournament might go get thrown around the hoss tournament uh, go, <laughs> go throw on 20 pounds real quick and just there run you in go there. there you go let's hit let's hit the buffet um <laughs> how much can we pack in this mongolian grill uh, bowl yeah uh, <laughs> awesome and hey, where can people find you online uh i am at uh find me on you know facebook edric everhart uh there's a system elite facebook page go and like that uh twitter i am at new ugly u-g-l-e-e i spell it weird because i'm a hipster as you do (laughs) as you do right and of course you can check out some matches including the premier championship wrestling and uh, of course, the IWC appearances as well. Yeah. Uh, look up System Elite over on IndieWrestling.us as part of that. Thank you so much for joining us and finally getting scheduled around this yeah. crazy weather we've been having. You have to get uh, you have to get Ty and myself in here one time. <laughs> that will uh, that will be ridiculous. That'll be pretty ridiculous. We'll get his side. We'll have him for in first and get his side of all your stories. Okay. You know, just for matching yeah. purposes, right? And then uh, you know, see where we go from there. So, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Go check him out and check out things like PC. PCW Premier Championship Wrestling. I'm not supposed to use PCW. Uh, Come on. And, 
and of course Rise Wrestling uh, around the Pittsburgh and the Cleveland areas, respectively. Um, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, the chat room really appreciates having you on, our friends from the West Coast. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, everybody. Until next time, please support indie wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.